Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be building an $800 gaming PC, and I'm also going to show you the difference between running this $800 build with an Intel Core i5-9400F and an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 processor. The other main difference in this build versus the $700 build I showed you last month is that I've upgraded the GPU from an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti to an AMD Radeon RX 5700. I've also upgraded the case from Cougar's MX330G in the last build to a fractal design Meshify C. As of right now, the Meshify C is not available on Amazon, but you can get it on Newegg for just under $90. This build also comes with 16GB of RAM, a 480GB SSD, and Corsair's semi-modular CX650M power supply. And as I just mentioned, I tested this build with both an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 and an Intel Core i5-9400F processor to give you a look at what the performance difference is and which option offers the better price to performance. So with that being said, let's take a look at the build process now.
I benchmarked this $800 build on a 1080p monitor in PUBG, Borderlands 3, Fortnite, The Witcher 3, Rocket League, Overwatch, Apex Legends, and League of Legends. With the Ryzen 5 2600, this build averaged 98 frames per second on ultra settings in Borderlands 3, 99 frames per second on ultra settings in PUBG, and 145 frames per second on epic settings in Fortnite. It also averaged 110 frames per second in The Witcher 3 at max settings with Nvidia Hairworks turned off. For Apex Legends, the combination of the Ryzen 5 2600 and the RX 5700 delivered about 139 frames per second on ultra settings. It also delivered 177 frames per second in Overwatch, also on ultra settings, 205 frames per second in League of Legends at max settings, and right at 250 frames per second at Rocket League at ultra settings. After switching to the Intel Core i5-9400F, the system averaged 103 frames per second in Borderlands 3, 105 frames per second in PUBG, 149 frames per second in Fortnite, and 116 frames per second in The Witcher 3 with Hairworks turned off. The i5-9400F and RX 5700 combination brought an average of 146 frames per second in Apex Legends, 182 frames per second in Overwatch, 230 frames per second in League of Legends, and just just at 250 frames per second in Rocket League. So in terms of the performance advantage that the i5-9400F has over the Ryzen 5 2600, it's really only about a 5-10% to difference in most games. Right now the Ryzen 5 2600 comes in at $120 on Amazon, while the Intel Core i5-9400F comes in at a little under $160. And in my opinion, the small performance gain that the i5-9400F comes with probably isn't worth the additional $40, especially when an extra $40 would get you pretty close to being able to upgrade from the RX 5700 to a RX 5700 XT or an RTX 2060 Super. The other downfalls of the i5-9400F is the stock cooler that it comes with and its inability to be overclocked. Intel stock cooler is pretty darn ugly, while the Wraith cooler that comes with the Ryzen 5 2600 will make for a more attractive looking build. It should be noted though that while the Ryzen 5 2600 can be overclocked, you will need to upgrade to a higher end cooler to get any kind of significant performance gain from overclocking it. So while it's common for some to say that you can just overclock the 2600 to mitigate the small performance difference between the 2600 and the 9400F, the reality is that you will need to spend extra on the cooler in order to hit overclocks that will provide enough real world performance gains in order to bridge the gap between the 2600 and the 9400F. And that extra money spent on an upgraded cooler would ruin the 2600's price to performance advantage over the 9400F. For aesthetic purposes though, it wouldn't be a bad route to go because for the same price as the 9400F, you'd be able to overclock your 2600 to match the performance of the 9400F and you'd have a much better looking cooler too. Overall though, if it were me, I'd stick with the Ryzen 5 2600 over the i5-9400F even if you aren't planning on upgrading the cooler. The small in-game performance boost that the i5-9400F offers isn't big enough to justify spending $40 extra on the Intel-based platform. And if you'll also be using your computer for tasks that would benefit from using more threads, the 2600 will help you out there as well. Now as for the difference between the GTX 1660 Ti that I used in my $700 build and the RX 5700 that I used in this build, there was a significant improvement in average frame rates, especially in the more demanding titles that I benchmarked both systems on. The 5700 was able to deliver at least a 20% performance increase over the GTX 1660 Ti in Borderlands 3, PUBG, The Witcher 3, and Fortnite. The gap was a bit smaller in less demanding titles like Rocket League, League of Legends, and Overwatch though, so if you mainly play those games you could definitely save some money and opt for a GTX 1660 Ti or even a GTX 1660 Super instead. Ultimately, the reality is that this $800 build either needs to be paired with a higher refresh rate monitor or a 1440p resolution display. For 1080p 60Hz gaming, it is completely overkill. However, considering how affordable 144Hz displays are nowadays, this system can easily be paired with a high performance monitor and you'd still end up paying less than $1000 total. If you are considering building your own PC and you want to use this system as is or as a template to customize to your liking, I have included links to all of the parts below. I will update that part list on occasion to ensure that all of the components are in stock and up to date. 
And if you want the most up-to-date version of our $800 build, go to techguided.com and find our $800 gaming PC build guide. I've also linked to our step-by-step -step PC build guide, so if you've never built a PC before and you're interested in doing so, you can use our guide to help you through the process. In any case though, that does it for this video. Thank you all for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.